Well, welcome to Learning Chromebooks today. It is uh, September 23rd. Uh, we've got about the usual 30. Well, you, know, you always get about 30 people, right? Yeah, we're, over th we're over 30. Are we at 30 to 40? Yeah, great. Well, welcome to uh, Learning Chromebooks today. Uh, we were we have a really, really big show for you today. So we're going to get right into it. So we're not going to spend a whole bunch of time yakking and talking. Uh, let me introduce, as you probably all know, uh, Huey and I are doing this. Huey, do you want to say hello? I would say hello, Huey. Okay, hello, Huey. Hello, Huey. And Bob, <laughs> Bob, of course, is is uh, he's always here and helping and helping it helping us all the time. Thank you so much, Bob, and for looking after the uh, the people coming in and leaving. That's just great. So we are going to start the show today. It is being taped, and we will have the. Uh, recording. Huey usually sends it over to me later on this afternoon. I should have it up uh, pretty soon, and then he'll send out the uh, links for um, the links for the um, for the show in uh, uh, in in a newsletter in in the um, in the confirmation notice. So if you do, I'll just let you know we had a problem, and so if you were trying, if you had any friends that were trying to get in, uh, we had it set so that we had a maximum of a certain number of people and that maximum we reached and we weren't paying attention to it. And so if you tried to register for learning Chromebooks, it would have said it was full. So we've changed that because it's not full. We've got lots of room. So spread the word that you can get in and uh, it's uh, it will work now. So if you go to Tech for Senior, you'll see the link at the top. And of course, it's uh, you'll be able to register. And once you're registered once, we got your number, right, Huey? Yes. And that's why when know. you when you get the confirmation from us, it'll have at least one other date. And I've got to add more dates to it now. But because it's a re, it's a repeat event, it puts down several dates. Okay. And so somebody had asked me about that. So we're going to get going with the show now, and we're going to we'll have the question and answer at the end. And we're happy to stick around until I get too hungry because it's going it's to be lunchtime and uh, I can stick around until my stomach says it's time for lunch. So we're happy to do that. Uh, Huey, do you want to start off with your first, uh, the first segment? Okay. Find the right one here. We'll screen it. I guess I have to start it. Mm -hmm. Play games to learn how to use your Chromebook. I'm Huey Poplock. Chromebook Gamified Training. This is a hands-on, interactive, and gamified Chromebook training that will give you a quick overview and practical keyboard shortcuts to ramp up quickly on a Chromebook. The training game consists of quizzes and mini games divided into five sections. It will take about 30 minutes to complete the games, culminating in a survey to gauge their effectiveness. To start, we'll hit the launch button, loads the course, and we click start the game. First, you choose an avatar. We're going to choose the husky, the dog. This is the game. Welcome to the Chrome family. Let's take a super quick tour of this game so you know exactly what to do. You'll be able to come back to this tour at any point if you ever get lost. You click on continue. It says you'll start in the reception area and complete the games in there first. And you'll note that I don't do that. First, you have a chromometer. And this is the chromometer. It shows you your progress as you complete the game. The menu, you can access it from here or inside one of the rooms by clicking my avatar. Here you can see all the sections you have completed, your total points earned to, so far, and all of the badges you've managed to collect. More info, you can find out more information about your Chromebook or follow up on the information that you learn throughout the game. It will be available once you've completed the first area reception. If you need help or you're unsure what to do or get lost, just look for the help icon. They'll point you to the right direction. 
we're going to start with At Your Desk. There's four sections here. It's time to get down to business. Here you'll find handy Chromebook app equivalents and uncover how to use Microsoft Office on your Chromebook. You'll also discover how to personalize your wallpaper to make your Chromebook yours. First, there's a match game, apps galore, the app shelf, app toss, ready settings go, beat the clock, and then using Microsoft Office. So we're going to launch the apps galore, which is a memory game. We won't play all of the games. As I said, this takes around 30 minutes, and we're not going to keep you busy watching me play. You can get in there and play for yourself, but you'll see where it gives the instructions, and we'll play part of this so you can see it, and then we'll go to the end so you see how it keeps score. So I want you to click play. have to get to see what some of these are first. No, that's not a match. Try that. Ah, we have our first match. A spreadsheet creator similar to Microsoft Excel. Tells me how many moves. YouTube music and his match and there's our last match. We've got them all. Final score for this section is we got 88 points. We'll jump to another section. It's time to identify whether it's a Chromebook, Mac, or Windows app. It's an app toss. And we click on Google Photos first and it's going to be For a Chromebook. Pages is a Mac. And so you get the idea. We had a total score of a thousand points in that section. And then there's more. Let's take a look at another section. These are some true-false questions. We'll just look at a couple. I want you to see if I make a mistake, what happens. I get it correct, and I got 500 points for that section. And when you finish, it gives you the badge, and you continue to the next section. We're now in the reception area. This is one question about uh, keystrokes, and you just drag the various pieces and parts to complete your keystrokes for the corresponding shortcut. And you'll see I started filling them in. And you'll see at the end of the round, I ran out of time. And so I didn't get any points. And so it shows all of the correct keystrokes. It says take a screenshot so you'll know for reference later and using the screenshot keys. And to show you a few more questions in another section, just to show you how it's done with a timer, 60 seconds to answer these questions. And I didn't quite get the answer right. I wanted to show you that. And let's see if we can get one right. Chromebooks go through a verified boot. We'll choose this one when they're booted or restarted. And that's correct. I got 100 points. We'll do one more question. Verified boot is the first line of defense. Let's see if we're correct here. We submit. And we're not quite correct. And there's the correct answers. And so you get an idea of what the Gamify looks like. And we've gotten partway through it. And of course, we would finish it up. If you want to give it a try, you can head over to the games page and log into your Google account. After that, you need to create a profile with Intellum. 
Enjoy learning about Chromebooks. Thank you, Huey. So we got, we're going to have some fun playing games. Yep. It's how to learn. And that's, how to uh, learn. <clears throat> it's a nice way to do it, especially uh, for kids. But even, even those of us who are adults, you know, the match game, I remember the match game and try to remember things. And it's, uh, it does sink in a little bit easier when you play the games. Especially okay. since we're in our second childhood anyway. Abs absolutely. All right. Chrome OS 93. Let's see what we got. Chrome OS 93. New features. I'm Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. Welcome everyone to our Learning Call Book series. For the past three months, I've done a session on new operating system. We're now up to Chrome OS 93, which should be on your Chromebook now. But let's have a look what really the OS means. Let's talk about the difference between Chrome and the Chrome operating system. All right, in the top, you'll see the Chrome browser. We have many different browsers to choose from. Of course, we have Safari, we have Opera, and we have Firefox. All these browsers will run on different operating systems. So let's take the most popular browser, and that's Chrome. And Chrome, of course, will run on all operating systems as well as all types of devices, whether you have a phone, tablet, or a laptop. And that is the Chrome browser. But what's the Chrome operating system? Is that the same thing? Because that's what we run on our Chromebooks. So the Chrome operating system has the Chrome browser built into it. It's different than the Chrome browser in that it is an operating system and this is what powers your Chromebook. So now we have, of course, the Chrome browser and we have the Chrome operating system. Now following Chrome's version 93 release on Android, Mac, Windows, and Linux, the next release of Google's browser is rolling out. In fact, Chrome 94 is here and marks the start of upgrades every four weeks. This is a change uh, that has occurred and Google has now decided to be very punctual with upgrades to the Chrome browser and we will be seeing a new version each month. Most of you have Chrome OS 93, so what do you expect? Well, the Chrome OS is not starting this monthly rollout until we reach Chrome 96, which is another couple of versions, but version 95 is being skipped entirely. So there will be no Chrome OS 95. We'll be going straight to Chrome OS 96. Now, usually the Chrome operating system number follows the browser number uh, three to four weeks later. It usually takes about uh, two to three weeks for Chrome to rewrite the operating system to um, include the new browser. So we often see the Chrome OS coming out uh, about three weeks later. Now, many of you have Chrome OS 93, but the Chrome browser 94 is rolling out this week and will be part of a new four-week cycle. So we should be seeing 95 in about a month. Now I want you to take a look at some operating systems. In the top left corner, you have the Microsoft operating system Windows 10. And of course, it is a very big truck. It's, uh, it needs lots of horsepower to move consumes a whole bunch of gas or power and it needs this to power all the legacy applications that Windows has to use. So that's why you have such a big powerful computer with lots of RAM to run Microsoft Windows. Look at the bottom right and you have the Apple operating system and again it is a very big operating system. You need a lot of horsepower to run the Apple OS. Now on the bottom left, you'll see the 
Google operating system, the Chrome OS. And I want you to think of this as the Mazda Miata. Goes like stink, needs little horsepower and not much gas. And that, my friends, is the uh, what the Chrome OS is. Now let me explain how the Chrome operating system works on your Chromebook. First of all, there are two copies of the Chrome operating system on your Chromebook. There is a primary copy, which is the one that you use all the time. And then there is a secondary copy, which is the one that gets updated. Hey, that's a novel idea. Come on, Microsoft, can't you learn something? Remember all those times with Windows where you're right in the middle of a presentation and it wants to update the operating system? Nope. Chromebooks always have had a primary and secondary copy, and this secondary copy is the one that gets updated. So it never bothers you, right? And it, since it's such a small operating system, it doesn't take up much space. The second thing is, is all Chromebooks have a TPM chip. Now, you probably are hearing more about TPM chips now because of the new Microsoft Windows 11. Finally, Microsoft probably learned something from Chromebooks. Chromebooks have always had TPM chips in. These are security chips made by Google that are encrypted and locked so they can't be changed. And as the um, operating system starts up in your Chromebook, there's three levels of security that your operating system goes through to check and make sure that everything is fine and that uh, is checked against the TPM chip in your Chromebook. If there are any problems, of course, it will revert to the previous version, and if needed be, it will go onto the internet, download, and install a brand new, fresh copy of the operating system, taking only minutes, not hours or days. So this is what makes a Chromebook so secure. Now, so I've said your Chromebook has two copies of the operating system. It has a primary copy and a secondary copy. And the secondary copy is the one that gets updated. So when you're not looking, Google switches them. It switches the secondary copy and makes it the primary copy and then goes back and takes the primary copy and of course applies the upgrade to it. So how does the process of switching copies occur? Well, this occurs when you restart your Chromebook. So you do need to understand this. So in order to restart your Chromebook, there are three ways that you can do this. You can restart your Chromebook using the Chromebook interface. And in the diagram here, you'll see, of course, the power button on the software. When you click the power button just beside sign out, that should shut your computer down. When you shut your computer down and restart it again, then the copies inside your Chromebook are switched. Option two is to use your keyboard to restart your Chromebook. To do this, you have to press and hold the refresh plus power button together. The refresh key looks like an arrow and is the fourth key from the left on the top of your Chromebook's keyboard. And this will restart your computer. And the third way you can do this is by using the power button on your Chromebook. And you can just push the power button and turn it off. Now, why is this important? It is important because if you don't restart your computer, you will never get the new copy of the operating system. Now, if you're like me, when I finish with my Chromebook at the end of the day, I just close the lid and that puts it to sleep but it does not reboot the computer, so it doesn't change the primary and secondary operating systems. So if you are like me and you just sort of close the lid and you never actually reboot your computer, it's important to manually update the operating system every so often. And I'm gonna show you that in the next part of this video. Let's see how it's done. So today we're going to look at the Chrome OS 93, which has been released to some Chromebooks in the last week. 
I want to review just how to update your Chrome OS manually in case you haven't automatically done this as we described earlier. So let's come down to the um, to the shelf. We're on the Chromebook shelf here at the bottom. We're going to, again going to click our accessibility menu and we're going to come up and uh, to the settings, this little settings button here, we're going to click settings. Now, uh, then we're going to come over to the left and we're going to click about Chrome OS. This is going to click here. We're going to click here and again, we're going to come up and you'll see check for updates. So we're going to do that. Let's check for updates. And it tells me my Chromebook is up to date. The version is 93.0.4577.85, which is the official build. So I am up to date. But if I had not repowered my Chromebook, in other words, cold booted it uh, and just closed the lid, I would not have the latest version. So we do. So now um, we can come down. And so for this version of OS 93, let's see what's new. So we're going to click this. And this is where you get all the information about your new uh, Chrome OS. Chromebooks update automatically to provide you with the latest features and keep the software fresh and speedy. And here are some highlights of the update. So the first one is better video calling experience. With the new Google Meet app, you'll get improved performance and easy to access features like video backgrounds that makes meetings more inclusive and fun. Google Meet is also now pre-installed on all new Chromebooks, so it's easy to search for the app pressing the everything button or the search key. Well, let's have a look at my computer and my Chromebook and see if I have the Meet app on it. So we're going to come back down to the shelf at the bottom here. This is the shelf and we'll come over to our launcher button and we're going to type in Google Meet. And of course, it's looking for all the apps on my Chromebook. This is a new feature in the launcher where you can just search and look for all the apps that you have. But I don't see Google Meet here because I don't use Google Meet. So what would we do if we wanted to use it? Let's think about that for a minute. Let's, uh, let's close this and let's look down here. And of course, uh, we're going to click the up carrot here and let's come over to the Play Store. Now remember, the Play Store is the Android store that we use for our, of course, our Android phones. But this is also where we can download apps from the Play Store. So let's uh, click the Play Store and it's going to take us to uh, Google. And here is my Play Store. And I'm going to type in Google Meet. And here it is. So let's click on this. And this is about this app. And it says uh, Google Meet. It's made by Google. And this is the app that we were talking about. And I'm going to install it. So let's click Install. And it says that it's verifying and it's uh, identifying it as a verified play protect. So this means that Google has checked this out to make sure that there are no viruses. All right, now we have installed Google Meet. Let's come back. And another new feature of Chrome OS 93 is adding an emoji with a new picker. It's even easier to express yourself with emoji on Chromebooks. The new shortcut, and that's the everything button, or the search key, plus shift, plus space, brings up a compact emoji picker. 
you'll be able to see your recently used emoji, search and scroll for others. With a click, insert the perfect emoji into a conversation document or any text field on your Chromebook. Let's see how this works. I'm going to come down now and we're going to come over to, uh, to my Gmail account. Uh, I have my uh, cursor here and I'm actually going to right click the mouse and right click the mouse on a blank uh, part of the uh, screen here and you'll see at the top it says emoji and uh, you can either get there by clicking on this button or you can hit the search shift and space button so let's click this and see what happens and here it brings up all our emojis that we can choose and we can choose across the top here many different ones I sort of like the Apple one here let's click this and that now inserts an Apple into our email and wherever you are in your Chromebook book whatever um, uh, app you're in this will work and uh, you'll be able to add your favorite emoji and it shows you the recent ones used and you have quite a selection here you can go across and there's some pretty pretty interesting ones here that you can use uh, so have some fun with this i always like to uh, like to include uh, an emoji or two in my email it always adds a little bit of interest so this is a new feature for chrome os 93. personalize your desktop we have already shown you some of the brilliant pictures you can have but you can certainly personalize your desktop with new wallpapers. Try them now by right-clicking your desktop, choosing Set Wallpaper, then Togetherness. And you'll have a great, great choice of some beautiful images you can put on, on, on your Chromebook. Now, more files at your fingertips. You might already use Tote for quick access to your recent downloads screen captures, or any files you have pinned. Now complete scans from the Files app and reports from the Diagnostics app will show up in the tote. So once you have scanned a document, it will be easier to find right on your Chromebook shelf as it will go right into the tote. The same with the Diagnostics app. Uh, this is a new feature that came out in last edition Let's just have a look. Down at the bottom here on the shelf, you'll see the Diagnostics app. Let's just run this and see what happens. All right, let's see what the Diagnostic app is going to show. Well, it's going to show that I'm running out of battery. I only have one hour and 15 minutes left. You can also run a discharge test. It tells you um, your CPU, what the current temperature is, uh, what the current uses is, and what the current speed is. And you'll see its graph there as well. It tells um, how much memory you have. Uh, and I've used 2.26 gigabytes of my 7.68 gigabytes available. And you can run a refresh on this or a memory test. And the results of these will be saved in the tote. Now it's been multiple years since Google revamped the app drawer for Chromebooks, replacing the aging card launcher with a touch-focused one. The redesigned launcher brought usability improvements to touchscreen Chromebooks, but the experience is quite unintuitive with a mouse. While Chrome OS doesn't address the issue entirely, it introduces a tweak that makes moving apps feel a lot less slippery. If you tap and hold on an app in the launcher, you'll see a new UI that makes it easy to see where your app is going when moving it around. Speed up video playback. If you're watching a lengthy video or series, the time saved by speeding it up slightly could amount to hours without necessarily making the content hard to understand. With the newest Chrome OS 93 update, the Chrome browser will integrate playback speed controls 
right into its media player to save you the time. Well, Chrome's new video speed controls can be used on all platforms running 93 or greater. It earned a special place on the list because the enormous amount of time it could save with long videos. All right, Huey, you're up. <laughs> I'm muted, okay. Give me a second here. Make sure I got the right one. I guess I have to start it. Mm -hmm. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Google's new cursive app for Chromebooks. I'm Huey Poplock. Since the cursive app is available as a progressive web app, you can install it by clicking the standard app install icon on the right side of your browser address bar. You can also pin the app to your system tray. Before using the Cursive app, you'll be greeted with a welcome screen where you can run through a quick tour of the app's features. To remove any written words, just scribble on them and then tap the scribbled area. Circle any content to group it and then drag the group wherever you want. Draw a horizontal line between any bits of handwriting and then drag the line down to add more between the lines. Select any content for copying, cutting, and pasting. Let's start our app. When we do, it opens up to the program and then loads any notes that we have. We're going to click on a new note and we'll zoom in on it so you can see it a little bit better. Now we'll fold the computer into a tablet format. We'll zoom in and start our cursive writing. You'll see I make a mistake and I can cross it out, tap on it, and erase it and then rewrite the word. You can see that I cut out parts of the recording so you're not bored watching me painstakingly write each of the words. And here is the final note. For this demonstration, I'm using three styli. Number one is the one that comes with my Dell Chromebook. Number two is one that you would find in any giveaway from any company uh, or some that you can buy. And number three is one that I bought from Amazon. I'm going to use all three stylus. When I use the stylus one, it worked fine. That's the plastic one that comes with it. And then when I want to use stylus two, I had a problem. So I hit the three dots at the top right and opened up a menu. And then I hit switch to touch mode. And now stylus two and stylus three were working. From our drop-down menu, one of the things you can do is export your note as a PDF. Here is that note that you saw me create as a PDF. Cursive does not convert your cursive writing into text in digital format, and it doesn't save it as a JPEG as well. You would have to do a screen capture to get a JPEG. Here are a couple of samples of what you might do. I'm not the best artist in the world, but you could write a little note and attach a little drawing for whatever purpose. Here I opened a graphic and added some notes to it. And here I did a quick sketch of a kitchen countertop. Again, my artistic capabilities are definitely wanting. You may find your own use for cursive. I hope I've helped. 
I'm Huey Poplock, Google's new cursive app for Chromebooks. If I can interject, it's sure. a quick way. It's a quick way to encrypt your information because the younger generation will never be able to read. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. And for our final, uh, and then we'll have a little time for question and answer. I know there's probably lots of, lots of questions. So we have one final video for you now. Uh, and this is one for me. And we'll just bring this up. It's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. And this is our learning Chromebook session. This is a gorgeous image that is on my Chromebook. Isn't it beautiful? We talked about the wallpaper app, app at the last meeting. Let me go into this a little more in a minute, but I wanted to show you this stunning picture. Let me come over into Google Photos and show you this even better picture. Oh my gosh. Every day when I start my Chromebook up, I get a new spectacular image of some of the greatest photographs I've ever seen in my life. And this is simply by turning on the wallpaper app and, and you get a new picture every day. Unbelievable. Just stunning pictures. The best I've ever seen in my life. And you know, you might want to actually save these pictures. So I'm going to show you that in just a minute. But the first thing I wanted to do is show you how to turn on this feature. So let's have a look at that. Okay, we're back now to our uh, main screen. And at the bottom, you'll see what we call the shelf. This is the Chromebook. This is, uh, this is the shelf on a Chromebook. And we're going to come over to the right side of the shelf. And we're going to click on this. And you'll see it brings up our accessibility menu. Now, I want you to uh, come up to the settings, and I want you to click on settings. And this is going to bring up personalization on the left-hand side. We're going to come over to the left, and we're going to come to uh, personalization. Let's click that and see where we go. Now, if we come up here, we're going to come up and we'll see the wallpaper feature. Now, there's something a little bit different about this. This is, it says, open the wallpaper app. Okay, now that's interesting. This is going to bring up the concept of a progressive web app. And I wanted just to explain this to you because this might be a bit confusing. All right. You all understand, of course, we have apps on our Chromebook. You've downloaded them and put them in the uh, on your Chromebook. Let's come down here. Let's go back down before we click that. Come along the bottom on the shelf and let's go over to the launcher. And this is this little button on the left side. We're going to click this and we're going to try and find this app that I have on my computer, on my Chromebook. Let's click our up arrow and we're going to come down and we're going to look through all my apps and I've done this and you will not find the wallpaper app. However, if we come up here, nope, it's not there. So let's come back and have a look at the and see where we go with this. And so let's click on the wallpaper the wallpaper app that is in this menu. Bingo. Here we are. We are now in the uh, wallpaper app and we have this stunning, beautiful picture that I have shown you. Now, what I'd like you to do is, this is what I recommend and this is what was pretty amazing. There's lots of other pictures, but this was stunning. So I chose landscapes, okay? And look down here. As I click here, this will toggle on or off the daily refresh. And this is where I get all these stunningly beautiful pictures. Oh my gosh. So please, if you have a Chromebook, set it up like this so that you can get these every day. It just comes up with a beautiful new picture. All right. Now, 
Let's say, for example, that you want to keep this app on your Chromebook. Well, that's interesting. So if you come down here and you'll come back to the shelf, you're going to see the Wallpaper Picker app is open. I'm going to get you to right click it and we're going to pin this and that's going to pin it to the shelf. Now, when we close everything out, and we, uh, we're going to close this out, you will see that it's still down here on the shelf, right? Click this, and it opens it up. So what have we really done here? Well, we've pinned a website, an app on a website. This is called a progressive web app. And you're going to see more and more of these come along on Chromebooks now where the app actually is not stored on your Chromebook. It's in the cloud. That's why we call it a progressive web app. And there are going to be many more examples that we're going to be talking about in the next uh, few sessions of progressive web app, because that is where most of the apps are being uh, written for now. And again, if you get the confusing part about this is, is if you go and say, well, I want to find that app now, if you come back over to the launcher, of course you'll see it because it is the one of the, this is the last five apps that we've opened. But if you actually go to, to try and find it, let's just bring this up and we click the little up arrow here and you come down, you will not find the progressive web app in here or sorry, you will not find the, um, the, the wallpaper picker here because it's not actually resident on your Chromebook. Okay, so that is how uh, you actually turn the uh, wallpaper picker on and you can choose landscape and get some gorgeous pictures uh, for your Chromebook. Also, this is an example of a progressive web app that is found on the web and actually not on your Chromebook. All right, we're back now on my Chromebook with another <laughs> amazing image. Let's say we want to capture and save this image, maybe put it in Google Photos, whatever, but we want to save this and maybe use it. You could use this as a background in your Zoom meeting. So let's see how to save it. Remember, uh, let me just show you this again. This was the image that I loaded into Google Photos. This is uh, uh, this is one of my favorite images of uh, beautiful. Look at the beautiful lake there. Uh, an amazing, amazing lake with the beautiful mountains in the background. And so it is uh, is really a spectacular, spectacular shot. So you may want to save some of these amazing images that we're going to see on our Chromebook. So how would we do that? Let's have a look at that. So we're going to come back down to the shelf. Remember, we're back down here on the shelf. We're going to come over to the right here, far right, and we're going to come up here and we're going to click our accessibility menu. And again, we come up with uh, the screen capture button. Now the screen capture is built now built into the Chrome operating system. So we actually have a built-in screen capture for, for our Chromebook. And you can uh, capture the screen uh, on um, in any app or anything that's on the screen, you can now capture using this app. So let's click this and see what happens. Well, it's going to bring up a little crosshair here. And I'm going to hold the uh, shift key down. And we're going to make a, and we're going to just drag this whole area here. And we're going to capture this beautiful picture. There we go. And it says here, do we want to capture it? And we're just going to click this button and we're going to capture this picture. Oh boy, this is going to be great. I'm going to use this as a backdrop on my Zoom meeting. So we click capture and it captures it. Now, one of the things that's confusing is this captures and saves it as a PNG file. Many of you are wondering, what the heck is a PNG file? Now, unlike JPEG, which relies on 
what we call DCT compression, PNG uses LZW compression. The same is used by GIF and TIFF files. The biggest advantage of PNG over JPEG is that the compression is lossless, which means there is no loss of quality each time it is opened and saved again. So a PNG file handles detailed high contrast images very well. So you mostly are probably aware of JPEG, but everything on a Chromebook when it's captured is saved as a PNG. Just think of it as the same thing. It's just you're going to have better quality, okay? Now, the other thing is uh, what you saw there, and we'll come back to that in a minute, is where did it go? Where did my image go? I can't find it. And it's a little bit different than on a Windows 10 machine. But we have a new feature on your Chromebook called the Tote. And if you look down here on the right-hand side, you're going to see this little 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 thing with a plus here and this is called your tote and this is where anything that you save will be saved in the tote so let's click on here and let's see what happens then we come up and here's our picture yes there's our picture and it is stored in our tote and if we click on this picture and we can pin it to the shelf if we want if we click on this it will of course bring it up now, let's try and figure out where, where the image go. Of course, we can see it in our tote. So let's have a look at our tote again. We're going to come down here to the tote. We're going to click on our tote. And here is our picture. Now, we could pin it to the shelf if we want, but that's not really what we want to do. We want to find the darn thing. It's somewhere on our Chromebook, right? So let's have a look and try and find it. So let's so the easiest way to do that now is to right click on the picture and we have the opportunity of removing this. Again, we can pin it. Uh, we could copy the image if you want to just do a copy and paste and paste it into an email or something like that. But I want to show it in my folder. So let's show it in the folder. So we're going to come in and we're going to click this and this is going to show it in our folder. Now, this is the file menu on a Chromebook. Again, this is a little bit different and confusing than a PC. So if you look, you're going to be able to see the image in your downloads directory, which of course is right here. It's under My Files. And the image, and it will highlight the image. So it's going to take you right to the image, which is right here. And if we click on this image, uh, you will see it you'll see the image in a minute and I'll show you that in a second here. All right, let's look at this image now. This image says this is that it's a, a 51.48 PNG. Now, let's just come up because we're also going to find it under images. Basically, there's subfolders on your Chromebook and uh, if you save anything that is an image, it will automatically be saved into the images file. So if you want to find any images, you don't have to go through all your downloads. All you have to do is come up to images. And here is our screenshot that we just took. It's in images. Now we can, of course, rename this. If we right click on it, we have the opportunity of setting this to the wallpaper. We can pin it to the shelf. We can get info, copy it, go to file location, share, but what we really want to do is we really want to upload this picture to Google Photos. Um, one of the advantages of moving it to Google Photos is there's so many things that you can do. And of course, it uh, stores it online. So let's, uh, let's come and highlight this picture. And we are going to come up and look at them on the top menu here. And we're going to come to a little button that says Share. Now remember, this picture is stored now on the hard drive in your Chromebook. So what I want to do is I want to click the Share button, and guess what? Well, we can now uh, open this up, and it says Google Photos Upload. Let's click this, and we're now going to say Upload. If you look down here at the bottom, it's going to say Upload, and I'm going to click Upload. And it's now uploading to Google Photos. 
So now let's come down on my Chromebook. You'll see I have Google Photos uh, button here. Let's click this. And you will see, of course, the picture now is in Google Photos in my Google Photos photo album. And now we can certainly uh, use that uh, as, as we require. And it is also resident on your Chromebook. And that's how you would save a picture uh, to Google Photos off your, off your Chromebook. Uh, I've shown you now how to use the, um, the capture feature and also how you find it. Because uh, now uh, let's go back and just look at that one more time. If we wanted to uh, find that image, if we came down, remember the tote is this little image here. We're going to click this. And there it is. There's our image, the last image that we used to, um, that we saved. And that is how you would copy and save an image from that wonderful background that we have in the landscape feature of the wall picker. All right. That's it. That's great. So we have done it. <laughs> We've got 10 minutes left for some questions. Uh, now, uh, if you can, there, there are a lot of people, what do we got? We guess we're up to 48 now, wow. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> anyway, so if you have a question, we'd be happy to answer it or take some questions now. Uh, because there's a lot of you here, if you can just in the reactions at the bottom, you'll see uh, if you click the reactions, you can raise your hand. And when you raise your hand, it puts you up in front of us and we can see you. If not, you have to scream, yell, or just sort of make, <laughs> try and get a hold of us some way. Uh, anyway, uh, we have uh, Stuart first. Go ahead, Stuart. I don't own a Chromebook. I, don't, I own a laptop. I own a desktop. Why would I want to own a Chromebook? Well, uh, <laughs> the, 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 there, there are a number of reasons for that. Uh, the, first, the first would be, ease of use. Uh, Chromebooks are a lot easier. Anybody who has tried to use Windows, um, I ran courses in Windows for years and the same people every year came back and never did figure it out. So uh, Chromebooks are inherently much simpler to use. The second thing is security. They are in, inherently very, very, very secure. So uh, that makes them uh, a good choice. And now since uh, Chromebooks they're selling, last year there were more Chromebooks sold than PCs in the United States. Uh, all the major manufacturers have uh, huge, huge lines of Chromebooks. Uh, and so there are lots of choices for you. So you have a wide variety of hardware specifications now, right up to you can buy Chromebooks for two or $3,000. So it's, um, it's uh, so that's, those are the reasons that I would choose. Huey, do you have any comments on that? Yeah, I would like to say how I got into using Chromebooks and talking about them and, and, and recommending them is uh, a couple of years ago, over 65% of the computers in schools were Chromebooks. It's higher now. Uh, and, and they're starting them out in kindergarten and first, second, third graders are all getting Chromebooks for their classes and they're working in it. And my philosophy was uh, at the time was if uh, kindergartners and first and second graders can use and learn about Chromebooks, certainly seniors can. And so I highly recommend it for seniors. Well, and not only that, but it in and certainly is that I would say that um, it's not just seniors because with the new technology and the new um, faster CPUs that we have now, these are mainstream computing. Uh, you know, we used to say seniors and, and kids, but I think, I think there's a group in the middle now that are using these, a large number of people are using these as mainstream computers now. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Dennis, go ahead. Just hit the space bar and unmute yourself. There you go. Um, I have a question, but I just want to comment on the thing you just commented on. So um, my wife got a Chromebook, and uh, one of the reasons she can answer this other guy's question, my wife basically just does email and browsing on And the Chromebook is perfect for that. She doesn't have to worry about putting in Microsoft updates or Microsoft security leaks 
and anything like that. She only uses it for a couple simple things and it works fantastic for that. My question is, um, you one of the things you paste you in the chat, one of the Sorry. things you paste in the chat was the um, Chromebook training game thing. You can you can bring up that link and do it on just a regular computer, right? You don't have to do that on the Chromebook to use that. That's correct. I, I believe so. Okay. It's an advantage of doing it that way is you can't refer back immediately to the Chromebook itself to right. verify stuff. So if you wanted to try something out yourself that you might have gotten wrong in the quiz, if you're on a Windows or a Mac, that's not possible. Thanks, Bob. Anita, go ahead. When I did the capture, I thought it looked like I could crop the picture I had. So I, I did. I took the little plus sign and made it smaller, but that's not what saved. So that's not a crop, a crop feature. Um, I would have to have a look at that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure specifically. I can share my screen. Um, let me just uh, let me just uh, share my screen. Control the control and the uh, uh, the one function key will give you a full screen, and the control shift and that same key will give you a kind of grayed out screen, and you can drag, click and drag the area that you want and if that's not cropping but that's giving you the area that you want and you can see from ron's screen there what it does and you can grab a certain area right. as far as as far as cropping goes i don't know that you i don't think you can do it within the uh app itself or within the uh operating system i think you have to use some kind of a video uh, editor yeah, uh, no, yeah no. A, a, a graphic editor yeah right and the other thing is, don't forget that not only do you have the image that you can capture, but you can also make a video and you can also capture a video sequence as well. So you have two choices there. So the answer is what you see is what you get when you save it. Yes. With a yes. screen capture. Yes, see. but you can choose what you want to capture though, right? Like you can you can change this around. Um, so you so I can I can make this, you know, I can move this around so we can have choice of where we want to capture it. Can I go back to the shelf? I couldn't find the micro the um, microphone. Uh, the microphone's at the bottom. That's uh, no, not on mine. <laughs> All right. So what I want you to do is come over to. Let's just have a look here, and we will. I uh, think it was we could turn it on here. No, so we'll, go, we'll come up to come up to settings. Yeah. And we'll come over here to uh, where the heck device display personalization. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I got to find it. Um, you know, there are um, go to the search settings at the top in that blank and type in microphone. See what you get. Then, then I end up going to the web to buy it, I think, or to Google. Play no, it. no, you shouldn't have to. Oh, uh, so um, let's hold on a sec here. We'll just try those things. Linux, no, no, no. Uh, where is that? Just let me think now. Advanced features. Accessibility, probably. Probably accessibility. Uh, Turn off the e search. Advanced. Where are we? Languages, files. Print scan to accessibility, uh, manage accessibility features. Um, here we are. This got to be um, enable select to speak. Uh, yeah, but I don't have that enabled. Um, keyboard input enabled. There, enabled enable dictation. Enabled. There, there you go. Right there. So you enter accessibility, and where did you go after that? Accessibility. Accessibility, oh, and just come down to. Um, keyboard and input text and come down to uh, enable dictation, speak to the, speak to type, okay? My That's accessibility what... screen doesn't look like yours. 
Uh, manage your features. Oh, there. Okay. Texas. Okay. There you go. Yep. I'm there. Thank you. Okay. There you go. There. All right. Uh, very good. Thanks, Nina. Uh, now we have uh, Gary. Gary, go ahead. Yes. Um, I, I would like to make the, uh, the screen uh, capture uh, with my Zoom background. Will that be would I have to transfer it into a Zoom folder somewhere like I do with Windows or or will I be able to find it and do that or how? Okay, just save, just save the capture and uh, save, it into a, uh, save it into a file. And, well, it's on your Chromebook. So when you're right. in Zoom, and I can't show you this, I don't, I can't show you this because I'm in Zoom now, but yeah. if you go to your Zoom meeting and you and you look at the virtual backgrounds sure. and you just click on there's a plus sign uh, there. Yes, just yes, click I'm, just yes. click on the plus sign okay. and it'll give you the uh, you're on your Chromebook. Right. It should give you the list of the files okay. and you just choose that and it'll it'll make that as your background. Okay, because I know on Windows I always have to to move my picture or, or my image into the Zoom folder. So okay, no, it should just be able to find it. I've, if okay. you look on my, you see the background I have yeah. on my Zoom. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I did. I just okay. uh, just chose it, and and that was such a great picture. I just put it there. That's all right. Name. I'm sorry. I I haven't done it on a Chromebook, so I, thank you. Should be the same. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah. Remember that. Remember that Chromebooks don't always uh, have the uh, virtual background capability, and so you may yeah. not be able, you that's, may not be able to use it. But you can save it somewhere where you can bring it in on your PC and have it as your background on your PC. That's a good point. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Huey. So Gary, just what, what Huey's mentioning is it depends on the, um, the amount of RAM and the, and the amount of um, horsepower you have on your Chromebook. Okay. If you have, if your Chromebook is very limited on RAM or, or available memory, Zoom automatically doesn't, will say, uh oh, you can't do that. And it won't okay. let you, and it won't let you bring up a virtual background. Okay. And All that's right. based and that's not and that's not a setting. It's just based on your the resources sure. of your Chromebook. Okay, well, I, I have the seven thirteen that you uh, recommended. Oh, that's great. Yeah, you should have no problems. You should have no okay. problems with the seven thirteen. Thank you. I have no problem doing it on a PC, but I've never tried yeah. it on a Chromebook. Thank you very much for Good your answer. Okay. Uh, and go ahead, Joe. Yeah, I I have two simple questions. Part of my motive uh, going to Chromebook was I have about six or seven old computers, some of them were Windows 7s sitting around. I just want to make use of it, uh, put in an operating system that makes it work and maybe donate it to somebody so they can fire it up and ready to go. That's one question. Is that a good direction for recycling them? I see you is shaking his head. <laughs> no. Well, depends on your point of view. <laughs> Look, I'll get Huey to give his point of view and I'll give you my point of view. Uh, in order to uh, put it on an older computer, you have to run something. I can't remember the name of it, but it's a uh, it's a it's a it's not really the Chrome operating system. It it simulates it and it doesn't allow you to have any of the Android apps and a lot of the capabilities of uh, of the Chrome OS. This may change in the next year or so because Microsoft uh, bought, it's called Neverware. Yeah, Google, Google, bought, Google, 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 bought. Google, Google bought Neverware. So somewhere along the way, they may start incorporating it. So that is a good uh, way to recycle, but most likely Linux would be the best bet if you want to do it. Okay. Now, the second question is, uh, I'm sitting on a fence uh, to upgrade my computer, so I'm thinking of Chromebook. Now, one of the things that I concern a lot is uh, people eavesdrop what you're doing on the internet and listen to what you're doing and uh, make a profile and then send you advertise. Now, do I have to put uh, 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 like a virus control and all that thing for Chromebook? No, no. So the, there is no vi antivirus for a Chromebook, but that is all built into the operating system. So there, you don't have to do anything. You know, you don't have to do any memory management issues. You don't have to do any any um, uh, security features. Well, I mean, I'm not going to, but there are no antivirus. The antivirus issues 
of, of a Chromebook are all built into the operating system. So it is, that's what makes it so secure. That's a good thing. Thank you for the answer. Appreciate it. All right. Guess what? It's it's top of the hour. It's 12. I'm having too much fun. I don't want to go too. home. I don't want to go home. Is there any more questions? We got to give us one more question to answer. <laughs> yes, we have a good time. Well, all right. So all good things must come to an end, which means we'll be doing this again next month, same time, same place. And now that we've got the bugs fixed in our registration system, right, Huey? Yes. People can, people can register. Uh, people can certainly register. So invite your friends, your relatives, anyone who might uh, either have a Chromebook or cons is considering it, and ask around uh, and see if your local schools are using them as well. Because if you decide you want to get one, you may, especially if you're in a user group, you might be able to have some elementary school kids come in and do presentations for you to how to use them. There you go. So uh, with that, we will have this um, out to you. Um, the good thing probably. is to do this, you don't have to have a vaccination card. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Bob. Thanks a lot. So we'll have this video out to you. Uh, by the end of the day, uh, and then Huey will be sending it out as a follow-up in our Learning Chromebook series. Uh, now, both Huey and I, these all go on our Tech for Senior, while well, Huey's goes on Huey.net, these, uh, my two are in the individual sequences I did, so if you want to see them right now, they're over on our Tech for Senior page, and you can go and watch them and there as standalone, or, or we will be making the whole learning Chromebook hour that we had and sending that out as well as a video. So you can look at them either way. There's a lot of information there and you probably want to go back and look at it. So until we see you again in a month, thank you so much for coming. Bye Thanks now. Thanks everybody for coming. Thank you.